There was once a time when castles dotted the landscape, but lucky for us modern folk, there are plenty of remnants and ruins still intact to this day. Some may have only one wall standing, and others may be in a complete state of disarray. Many have undergone renovations to keep them going through all those years. So join me for today's video. We're going to look through 15 of the most stunning castles in the world. Number 15. Neuschwanstein Castle Neuschwanstein Castle is a stunning 19th century historicist-style palace on a rugged hill above the village of Hohenschwangau near Fussen in southwest Bavaria in Germany. The palace was commissioned by King Ludwig of Bavaria as a retreat and in honor of Richard Wagner. Ludwig chose to pay for the palace out of his personal fortune and by means of extensive borrowing rather than Bavarian public funds. Construction began in 1869, which is relatively recent, but the castle was never fully completed. It was intended as a private residence for the king until he died in 1886, and was open to the public shortly after his death. Since then, more than 61 million people have visited this castle, and it's not hard to see why. But to break that number down a little bit, more than 1.3 million people visit annually, with as many as 6,000 per day in the summer. Neuschwanstein Castle embodies both contemporaneous architectural fashion known as the Castle Romanticism and King Ludwig's enthusiasm for the operas of Richard Wagner. Had it been completed, the palace would have had more than 200 interior rooms, including premises for guests and servants, as well as for services and logistics. Ultimately, no more than about 15 rooms had halls that were finished. In its lower areas, the palace accommodates administrative and servants' rooms and the rooms of today's palace administration. The king's staterooms are situated in the upper stories, and the interior structure accommodates the lodgings in the third floor above them in the Hall of Singers, and the upper floors of the west-facing area of the structure are almost filled completely by Thorn Hall. The total floor space of all floors amounts to nearly 65,000 square feet. Number 14. Chateau du Chambord you can't talk about kings, queens, and palaces without talking about France, which is home to one of the largest palaces in the world, the Chateau du Chambord. This place is amazing. France's Loire Valley, known around the world for being home to multiple castles and palaces, Chateau du Chambord is the crown jewel of the place. The chateau's history reaches as far back to the 16th century and acted as the retreat and summer home for many French kings over the years. And the thing about summer homes is they're always better than your year-round place. And if there's one thing French kings of old like, it was their space, and a lot of it. So this chateau is made up of 440 different rooms for guests, servants, and fellow nobles, with plenty of space across multiple stories. The chateau has 13 great staircases, unlike anything you've ever seen before, with the main attraction here being the extravagant double helix spiral staircase. And while the jury's still out on this one, there are those who believe that this human DNA-shaped spiral staircase is designed by none other than Leonardo da Vinci himself. It would seem that he was onto some pretty royal ideas, but perhaps the coolest part of this chateau is the stable. But these aren't just ordinary stables. Instead, there's enough space here to accommodate up to 1,200 horses. Number 13. Alhambra when we think of castles, it's easy for the mind to go straight to medieval England when the lords and ladies ruled supreme. But Spain has plenty of castles to show off too. So if you ever get the chance to visit the country, why not take a day to check out Alhambra Castle? This is a sweeping palace and fortress in Andalusia, Spain, and was built in the 13th century. And part of what makes Alhambra so cool is that it was built right on top of the ruins of former Roman fortifications. It officially became the royal palace in the year 1333, and by the mid-1400s, Alhambra was the site of the royal court of Ferdinand and Isabella, and legend has it that Christopher Columbus was even given the green light for his famed expedition here. But on the outside, Alhambra is a solid example of the Moorish architecture that dominated the ancient Muslim dynasties in the region. There's plenty to do and see here too, like the Court of Myrtles, Hall of the Ambassadors, and Court of the Lions. And if you get here at the right time of year, it's surrounded by lush green trees. Number 12. Kylemore Abbey Kylemore Abbey is a Benedictine monastery founded in 1920 on the grounds of Kylemore Castle in Connemara, County Galway, Ireland. The abbey was founded for Benedictine nuns who fled Belgium in World War I, and since 2022 belonged to the English Benedictine Congregation. Kylemore Castle was built in 1868 as a private home for the family of Mitchell Henry, a wealthy doctor from London whose family was involved in textile manufacturing in Manchester, England. He moved to Ireland when he and his wife Margaret purchased the land around the abbey. 
and after traveling there on their honeymoon in the mid-1840s, the castle was designed by James Franklin Fuller and aided by Samuel Usher Roberts. The epic construction of the castle began in 1867 and took a total of 100 men and four years to complete. The castle covered approximately 40,000 square feet and has over 70 rooms with a principal wall that was two to three feet thick. The facade measures 142 feet in width and is made of granite brought from Dalkey by sea and limestone brought from Ballinasloe. In total, there are 33 bedrooms, four bathrooms, four sitting rooms, a ballroom, a billiard room, library, study, school room, smoking room, gun room, and various offices and domestic staff residents for the butler, cook, housekeeper, and several other servants. But what's so nice about this castle is the local Benedictine community continue to help in the upkeep having restored the Abbey's gardens and Gothic-style church along with the help of local artisans. Number 11. Edinburgh Castle Scotland is incredibly old, and so there are plenty of castles still standing that can provide us with all a glimpse into the country's past, but there's one that really takes the cake. Edinburgh Castle sits on the aptly named Castle Rock and overlooks the entire capital for which it's named. And while the castle's positioning may serve as an incredible backdrop for the folks below, it had a more strategic implementation when it was built. Everyone in the castle could see the enemy as they approached while still remaining incredibly difficult to reach. Simply put, Edinburgh Castle has the high ground. The castle has a bit of a tumultuous history, and during both the First and Second Wars of Scottish Independence, it changed hands back and forth between the Scottish and the English plenty of times. Nowadays, though, the tensions have died down a little bit, and Edinburgh Castle is one of the top tourist attractions that Scotland has to offer, with plenty of tours and events happening throughout the day. And even if you do want to avoid the castle crowds, this place is probably the most picturesque scene in the entire country, and simply enjoying it from afar may be just as magical. Number 10. Conway Castle Built between 1283 and 1287 by Edward I during his conquest of Wales, Conway Castle is a fortification constructed as a part of a wider project to create the walled town of Conway. Over the next few centuries, the castle played an important part in several wars. It withstood the siege of Mad Dog Ap Llewellyn in the winter of late 13th century and acted as a temporary haven for Richard II nearly a hundred years later and was held for several months by forces loyal to Owain Glyndwyr in 1401. Following the outbreak of the English Civil War in 1642, the castle was held by forces loyal to Charles I, holding out until 1646 when it surrendered to the parliamentary armies. In the aftermath, the castle was deliberately damaged by Parliament to prevent it from being used in any further revolt, and was finally completely ruined in 1665 when its remaining iron and lead were stripped and sold off. It was a sad fate for the stunning castle that had been through so much, but it found new life in the early 19th century when it became a hot destination for painters. Visitor numbers grew and initial restoration work was carried out in the second half of the 19th century, and by the 21st century the castle's become what we see today, and it's become a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1986. Number 9. Swallow's Nest, Crimea the Swallow's Nest is an amazing decorative castle located at Gospra, a small spa town between Yalta and Alupka in the Crimean Peninsula. It was built between 1911 and 1912 on the 130-foot-tall Aurora Cliff in a neo-Gothic design by the Russian architect Leonid Sherwood for the Baltic-German businessman Baron von Steingel. The first building on the Aurora Cliff was constructed for Russian generals in 1895. This first structure he built was a wooden cottage romantically named the Castle of Love. Later on, the ownership of the cottage passed to A.K. Tobin, a court doctor to the Russian Tsar. The castle continued to change hands over the years, being sold to be used as a restaurant and a tourist attraction in 1914. In 1927, the Swallow's Nest survived a 7.0 earthquake, but because the cliff it sits on was cracked, the castle doors closed to the public for the next four decades. Renovation and restoration of the building began in 1968, with the project involving the restoration of a small portion of the castle and the addition of a monolithic concrete plate to strengthen the cliff, which had cracked in the earthquake all those years ago. Since 1975, a restaurant is opened within the building. You know, the building itself is actually pretty small, measuring only about 66 feet long by 33 feet wide. Its original design envisioned a foyer, a guest room, a stairway to the tower, and two bedrooms on two different levels within the tower. The interior of the guest room is decorated with wooden panels, and the walls of the rest of the rooms are stuccoed and painted. An observation deck rings the building, providing a view of the sea and Yalta's distant shoreline. 
It's an interesting take on a castle, seeing as how lords and ladies never quite grace the halls. Then again, you don't need to use royalty as an excuse to build something as truly spectacular as this. Number 8. Corvin Castle When you think of Transylvania, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Vampires? Count Dracula? No one can blame you for letting your mind go there, but Romania is also renowned for its collection of castles, with Corvin Castle being one of the most beautiful. It is an absolute must for anyone visiting the country. Corvin Castle was built as the Middle Ages were coming to a close, so it has a very distinct Gothic Renaissance style, and is even one of the largest castles in all of Europe. That's no easy feat. When you look at Corvin Castle, your eyes will quickly notice the tall and imposing towers that point straight up at the sky. There's also some impressive bastions as well as the inner courtyard, different colored roofs and rows upon rows of windows and balconies, all decorated with intricately crafted stone carvings. It's also impressive you have to remember that those minute details were all done by hand. The castle served as a fortress well into the 14th century, with the Buzdugan Tower serving as the focal point, and it was once home to the local Transylvanian governor, Yanku de Honadoara. Number 7. Skeligero Castle Built in the latter half of the 14th century on the southernmost part of Lake Garda in northern Italy, the Scaligero Castle is a fortress from this era and an access point to the historical center of Simeone on Lake Garda and is one of Italy's best preserved castles. Built at the tail end of the 14th century, construction was initiated on behalf of the Della Scala family of Verona, who are known as the Scalieri family, from which the castle takes its name. The family ruled Verona and a large part of the Venetian area from the years 1259 to 1387. The castle was later controlled by the Republic of Venice from the 15th century, after the Della Scala family submitted it to Venice in 1405, and then it remained an important fortification for the area. However, its decline in importance began with the completion of the nearby fortress in Pesciera del Garda in the 16th century. No longer the fortress it once was, it became the office of the local government after the unification of Italy, and restoration shortly began after the First World War, when it became a museum and tourist attraction. However, it was not fully restored until 2018, when the internal waters of the castle were cleared. But in 2019, it was the 22nd most visited attraction in all of Italy, with 308,000 visitors. Number 6. High Clear Castle the next castle on our list has one of the oldest histories we've seen yet. The first written records of the High Clear Castle estate are dated 749 AD when Anglo-Saxon King granted the estate to the bishops of Winchester, and today it serves as the main location of the hit TV show Downton Abbey. The 5,000-acre estate is in High Clear in Hampshire, England, about five miles south of Newbury, Berkshire, and it's nine and a half miles north of Andover, Hampshire, and serves as the seat of the Earls of Carnarvon. During its long and illustrious life, the High Clear Castle has served as a square, a mansion home, a hospital for those wounded in World War I, and even a home for some Egyptian artifacts. It's pretty amazing what this place has been through, and if those walls could talk, there's no doubt that they have hundreds of hours of stories. During World War II, High Clear House evacuated children before falling victim to aircraft crashing through the roof. Repairs finally began in the 21st century to the tune of about $12 million before opening up to the public for self-guided tours. Number 5. Chateau du Pierrefonds The Chateau du Pierrefonds in France is an incredibly powerful-looking piece of architecture, with plenty of towers and spires that sit high over the treetops. It looks like it belongs at a theme park, but rest assured it is the real deal. And while it may not have been home to the likes of Merlin, it certainly has a magical appeal to it. The chateau was built between the 14th and the 15th centuries before it was destroyed and left in a state of total disarray for the next 200 years. Things got so bad that Napoleon purchased the castle in 1810 for a measly 3,000 francs. But shortly after his purchase, the chateau became a great monument of historical and cultural significance for France, and so it underwent a big-time restoration. And things really worked out, because while the Chateau du Pierrefonds is an incredibly popular tourist destination, it's also appeared in plenty of films and television shows, making it one of the more recognizable castles in the world as well. Number 4. Hohenwerfen Castle Hohenwerfen Castle Hohenwerfen Castle is found in Austria, surrounded by the Brechtesgaden Alps near the Tenen Mountains, not too far from the German border. But this castle looks like it was built for a movie set where the main character goes to train before the big battle. It's an absolute masterpiece that dates all the way back to the 11th century. 
This castle was on top of a 500-foot-high rock to serve as a strategic high ground, serving as a military base for years for Salzburg before becoming a residence and even a hunting retreat. Much has happened within these walls, especially when it became a state prison. If you visit the castle today, though, it's much less nefarious and serves as a museum that showcases not just the nation's history, but also a vast collection of nasty medieval weapons, many of which saw some action at the foot of the hill all those years ago. But what's really cool about this castle is you can still go up to see the falconry, where they housed all sorts of birds of prey for hunting, and the staff will even put on a flight demonstration with birds like eagles, hawks, and vultures. Awesome. Number 3. Osaka Castle not all castles are going to be in Europe. Osaka Castle is one of Japan's most famous landmarks, and it played a major role in the unification of Japan during the 16th century. Construction began at the end of the 1500s before being completed in 1597, and while it certainly held its own during multiple battles, it's been destroyed three times before the final restoration in 1995. But in more recent history, it was during World War II where Osaka Castle could really shine once again, when it became part of the Osaka Army Arsenal and employed 60,000 workers. Continuous Allied bombing raids would target the arsenal and damage the reconstructed main castle tower, and on August 14, 1945, destroyed 90% of the arsenal and killed 382 people working there. So cut to 1995 and the Osaka government finally approved the restoration project with the intent of restoring the main tower to the Edo-era glory. It was no easy task, but Osaka was certainly up to it, and in 1997 the new restoration project was completed. Today the castle is a concrete reproduction of the original, and the interior is intended as a modern functioning museum, and unlike the Edo era, this Osaka castle has built-in elevators. Number 2. Castillo de Coca the exquisitely crafted Castillo de Coca can be found in Segovia in central Spain and looks like something straight from your favorite televised fantasy series. But you better believe that this castle is 100% real. Much of the 15th century castle is carved right into the rock it sits on, and it's one of the best examples of Spanish Mudejar brickwork you'll ever find in the world, and combines both the Moorish Muslim design and construction with Gothic architecture. The Castillo de Coca sits in what was once a highly contested and war-torn area, which is why the bricks were especially hardened to withstand an enemy onslaught. This thing is pretty much built to last, and it certainly had, but the impressive means of defense didn't stop with the bricks. The castle itself features three tiers consisting of wall circuits enclosed with a moat and a central keep, so if the walls were somehow breached, the enemy would have to fight their way through waves and waves of soldiers before clearing the moat and being confronted by an onslaught in the center. Today, the Castillo de Coca is surrounded by green grass and blue skies, and will go down as one of the greatest, most beautiful castles in human history. Number 1. Peña Palace The final castle on our list is easily one of the most unique and stunning. Completed in 1854, the Peña Palace is a romanticist castle in São Pedro de Penafarim in Sintra on the Portuguese Riviera. The castle stands on top of a hill in the Sintra Mountains above the town of Sintra, and on those especially gorgeous days can be seen from much of the metropolitan Lisbon area. Part of what makes the place so special, though, is its one-of-a-kind eclectic style. It mixes and matches multiple styles, much in accordance with the exotic taste of the romanticism of the time. We're looking at neo-Gothic, neo-Islamic, and neo-Renaissance architecture all throughout, much of which has been evident since major renovations in the 1840s. Today, the Peña Palace is a national monument and constitutes one of the major expressions of 19th century romanticism in the world. It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the Seven Wonders of Portugal. But this old castle still gets plenty of use, as it's used for state occasions by the President of the Portuguese Republic and other government officials for all those fancy events and galas. It's a stunning piece of history and architecture and should be at the top of everyone's bucket list. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.